Hello everyone and welcome to part 4 of the Bootstraps section of the course. In this section of the course, we'll discuss Bootstrap's grid system. The grid system for Bootstrap is one of its most fundamental features. So far we've mostly seen just convenient tools that Bootstrap provides through class calls. And those are things such as calling those button classes in order to make sure they're shaped well, or calling classes on form inputs to make sure the spacing is correct and everything looks nice. But the grid system goes much further than that. The grid system provides the core mechanism by which using Bootstrap allows websites to look good across multiple devices of multiple screen sizes. And that's really one of the core purposes of Bootstrap, so that it looks good not just on your desktop, but on your laptop, your tablet, your phone, etc. Let's get started with an explanation of the Bootstrap grid system. So our fundamental question is, what happens when we look at our website on different screen sizes, whether it's on your desktop, your laptop, a tablet, or a phone? How do we reorganize our website so that it looks good across all of these devices? Well, the Bootstrap grid system has this fundamental idea. We'll split the entire screen into 12 available columns that you can see here that are highlighted. You have these 12 basic available columns. Then you can use any combination of numbers that will eventually add up to 12 columns. So on that second row, you see we have six by two columns. On that second example, example number two, we see four by three. Example number three, you see three by four, and then we see two by six. So we can split up those two columns in any way we want. And we can also split them up unevenly. So we could say eight on one side and four on the other, or vice versa. The grid system call will make use of the class equal to row. So we're gonna see when we're actually coding out examples, this class is equal to row call. And inside of a row class, we then have the following format. And the format, the general format for a grid system is call dash the screen size dash the number of columns. And the screen size dictates what screen size you're referring to. And there's a few basic screen sizes, and there's actually a little bit of a difference between Bootstrap 3 and Bootstrap 4 in this aspect. But you can think of the screen sizes as basically things such as large, medium, small, extra small. And now with Bootstrap 4, there's extra large. But we'll get into that in just a second. And then that third argument is number of columns. How many columns do you want to take up at this particular screen size? So for example, we have a call like this, col-md-6. And that basically says when the screen size is of a medium screen size, and there's actual pixel amounts to quantitatively define what a medium screen size is, I want this certain thing, whatever's in this container, to take up six columns or half of the available screen. All right, so we can define how the column should be shown when the screen gets resized, and those are basically known as breakpoints. So let's get started with some examples. We're gonna have our browser open. We'll be resizing our browser to see how the columns change as we make the browser bigger or smaller, kind of to emulate different device sizes. And we'll also see how we can account for that with our code. So I'm going to jump to my editor now. Okay, so here I am at my editor, and I have an HTML document open, and it's actually already linked to Bootstrap's CSS file online. First thing I wanna do is actually add in some style calls so I can see the grid system and columns clearly. So one way that we would normally do this is link this HTML document to a CSS file. But I can actually basically put a CSS file inside of this HTML by doing a style tag call. And you don't have to worry about this media screen. We can just take that out. And what we're gonna do is basically just write CSS here. I'm going to make a class called boxy. So I'll have that dot boxy there. And I'm going to give anything in that class a background color of a light blue. So that's a hex code I found here, B3DDFF. So that's kind of a light blue color. And then I wanna give it a border of let's say a two pixel solid black border. All right. So we'll see how that comes into play in just a little bit, but that's basically going to be for visualization purposes. It doesn't have much to do with the actual grid system of Bootstrap. So let's show you an example of using this Bootstrap system for the grids. So I'm going to make a container class, and then I'm going to call a div that has the class row. And we're going to need that class row to actually do anything inside of a grid system. And then what I will do here is add in some divs inside of this. So I have this class container, class row, and then here I'm going to type col large 
let's say large four. And then the class that goes with this is going to be col lg-4. And this is saying when the screen is a large screen, and so that's a certain amount of pixels, I want this, whatever this is, col large 4, to take up four of those 12 columns that are available to me. So I'm going to copy and paste this two more times because I have 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 4 is 12. So let's refresh this. And I can see now I have col large 4, col large 4, and col large 4. And to actually see this a little better, what I'm going to do is tack on this boxy class that I just made like this. And so now we can see that we can kind of tack on these classes. And you actually saw that a lot with the navbar lectures, that there was these classes kind of tacked on. But let's refresh this, and now I can clearly see where the columns are. So I have four of the 12 columns taken up here, four of the 12 columns taken up here, four of the 12 here. And this happens at a large screen. But what happens as I begin to expand this screen? Well, nothing happens even at like an extra large size because this basically stands for, for large and above. But what happens if I start shrinking this to below a large screen size? What happens if I hit a medium screen size? Boom. So look what happened here. Suddenly it all collapses and they're all just taking up all 12 columns. So they're all stacked on top of each other now. And that's something we're going to discover as we go along how we can actually fix this problem. Well, it's not really a problem, but how we can edit this to do whatever we want. Maybe we still wanted to have across the board these three together, even at a smaller screen size. Well, how would I do that? And let's explore through some more examples. So here I have this container class and let's change this. So we actually take up on medium size screens. Well, let's undo this, sorry. Let's copy and paste this whole thing. And let's add in something new right below this. That way we can see them both on top of each other. So I'm going to delete this. And now I'm going to say, instead of large, I'll type MD for medium. And this will now say MD. And let's make these guys six. So there's two of them. And we'll call this med six for medium med6 for medium. We will save this. Let's expand this browser, refresh the page. And now I see my original three columns here. So large four, large four, large four, and then two more column calls, medium six, medium six. So each of these is taking up six units of those columns. And now as I begin to shrink this, I can see the collapse once I reach what's known as a medium screen size, the large ones have already collapsed. However, the medium ones are still hanging on to their call there. And it's only until I reach a small screen size that even the mediums now will collapse. So let's continue on this by putting in something smaller to be our class call of the grid system. So I will copy and paste these guys. And now let's put in something like extra small, which is XS. And now I'm going to say extra small here. We're going to say extra small there. Save that. And we're going to expand this again, refresh. And now I can see I have large four, large four, those medium columns, and extra small six. And now let's see what happens as I begin to reach those breakpoints. So here's the breakpoint about to happen for medium. And we can see that medium has not been affected yet. Here's the breakpoint for small about to be reached. And we can see that extra small hasn't been affected yet. So as we keep shrinking this down, we can see that extra small is still going to hang on. In fact, it's going to hang on all the way. So as I make this tiny, this is basically the size of a cell phone string. This is as small as my computer lets me go. Extra small has still contained this two column formation using six of those 12 on this side and six of those 12 on this side. All right, so now the question arises, well, what do I do to account for different screen sizes? It seems like right now I can only account for one screen size at the very end. Well, you can actually just tack on classes together to make up for that. 
So let me show you what I mean by that. You can just add in size classes to account for behavior at different sizes. So what I will do now is the following. I'm going to, whoops, let's just delete one of these. And let's have it be col-lg-3. And we'll call this one. And then instead of just being three units on a large screen, I'm going to have it be six units when it reaches a small screen. And I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm going to make four of these. So we'll say one, two, three, four. And let's grab all these and comment them out. So we can just focus on what's happening with this guy. And this is example number four in the notes. So let me expand this, refresh, and here I can say I have one, two, three, and four. And if we look back on my HTML, I said, whenever the screen is large, each of these things should take up three units, which makes sense. They're each taking up three because three times four is 12 here. And then once I reach small or smaller, then they'll each take up six. So what actually happens here? Well, since they're each gonna have to take up six, once I reach small, then it gets split. So now one and two are taking up six, and then three and four are taking up six. And then as I continue going, once I reach extra small, they each take up one. So it only gets defined up to the smallest screen size you do. And if you keep breaking past that, it's going to line them all up together to take up all 12. So at this point in the lecture, what I would encourage you to do is really play around with these calls here. And you can reference the documentation either on the new Bootstrap 4, where there's basically an extra large screen size, which you may or may not be able to realize depending on how big your screen is. Or you can just go to getbootstrap.com slash example slash grid to actually see examples of this. So here we can actually see some grid examples. We have the three equal columns on medium. So this is about uh, desktop to large desktops. You can see three unequal columns, so three, six, and three, or two columns, eight and four. And there, here are just a bunch of examples that you can do as you explore. So what I would encourage you to do is come to this link, getbootstrap.com slash example slash grid, and actually play with these and see that you really understand how you can define a call as you resize your screen. Okay, so now that we've done that, you may be wondering, well, 12 units is pretty restrictive. What if I wanna divide further beyond 12 units? And that's actually really easy. All you have to do is nest those rows calls. So let's comment this out and actually do that. So I'll make a new div. It's going to be a row. And then I'm going to say div, we'll say class is col-lg-6 and we'll tack on the boxy class there. And then inside of this actually, I'm going to make another div called class row. So here right now I'm only taking up half of the screen on large screens. And then inside of this, I create another class called row. So then I'm gonna say div class, this will be call lg6 boxy. And this is where I'll actually put in some content. And we'll call this nest one and let's make another one just like it. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. And let's call it nest two. And then outside of this row class right here, so inside of this first one, but outside of this, what I'm going to do is the following. And I think I misspoke for a second. So outside of all of this, excuse me. So inside of this first initial row class, but outside of all this, I'm going to call a div and it's going to have the class col-lg-6boxy 
and let's give it a name like top level. So before we actually see what this looks like, let's explain what's actually going on here. So this is in order to get more than just 12 units. We can divide this further. So I'm calling the initial div class equal to row, and that tells Bootstrap, okay, we're going to be dealing with the grid system here. Then I call a class that says col-lg-6boxy. Inside of that, where we've been usually just putting in our straight content, in our case, it's been text, but a lot of times it can be images, links, whatever you want to put in there. But inside of that, instead of just putting the content straight away, I add in another class equal to row, which basically means I'm taking up everything inside this, lg-6, and putting in another 12 columns in there to play with. And then I'm splitting that in half. So there's going to be my nest1, nest2, and then there's my top level. So think about what you expect this to look like before you actually view it in your browser. Okay. So hopefully you thought about it. Let's take this, make sure we save it, expand our browser, refresh, and here is what we see. We see nest one and nest two on the left-hand side, and then we see top level over on the right-hand side. So what we ended up doing was we successfully nested these two in order to split them up. And then we have our top level taking up the rest of it. And that's how you can go further than just these 12 units. You can split up these units again and again using just nested class equal to row calls. Okay, so as a quick review of what we've been discussing, remember the entire idea behind Bootstrap is that this entire screen is split up into those 12 equal columns. And then you can decide based off a of screen size what you want to actually take up out of those 12 columns. So maybe when the screen is large, if we look back at this example, let me uncomment it. So we'll comment this one out and uncomment this one. So this one's probably the best example of how we'd actually use the grid system. So at a large grid size, I would say use three here, but when it reaches small, use six on each of them. And you can change this to whatever you want. So again, the basic idea behind grid systems and bootstrap is you define how many of those 12 columns you wanna use at certain screen sizes and that's basically going to account for the breakpoint. All right, if you have any questions on this, make sure you actually visit the documentation, especially this layout page on the Bootstrap 4 documentation. There's a lot more to it than what we've covered. There's like auto layout columns with equal width, and there's a lot more we can do there. We won't be messing around with the grid system too often when we're building our actual websites, which is why we're not going to go into all of this, but it is all there for you. The documentation is pretty clear on what you can and can't do, and it's a really great resource for you. And also check out getbootstrap.com slash example slash grid if you just want ideas for what you can actually do with it. Okay, thanks everyone. Again, feel free to post to the Q&A forums if you have any questions. But other than that, I will see you at the next lecture where we're going to have just a quick project to kind of wrap up everything we've been talking about Bootstrap with. Thanks, and I'll see you there. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Bootstrap project. For this project, you'll be recreating a landing page and a sign-in page that takes advantage of a lot of Bootstrap's features that we've been covering throughout this section of the course. What you should do is open the bootstrap underscore project underscore main.html file in your browser, and it's located under the Bootstrap folder. Remember that you can either tackle this project on your own at first, or just follow along with the solutions lecture, whichever you prefer. Let's take a quick look at the project page, what it's about, and then you can decide how you want to approach it. I'm going to hop to my browser now. Okay, so here I have open in my browser the bootstrap underscore project underscore main.html file. And this file actually contains all the instructions that you're going to need. So I would recommend copying the full path to this file and pasting it into your browser and leaving this as instructions you can follow as you create a new HTML file to actually follow along with. All right, so what are we actually doing here? We're creating this coffee lover project for Bootstrap. And what you're going to be doing is recreating this web page and an additional form page. And there's actually all the instructions that you're going to be doing here. So you're going to first create a general landing page with a jumbotron as I've done here. Then you're gonna create a nav bar on the page that links to another HTML file. So here we can see the welcome nav bar. And if I click sign in, it takes me to another HTML file, which is this project signup page. So going back here to the landing page, what you're going to be doing is then adding two paragraphs of lorem ipsum to the jumbotron. 
which we have over here. They're actually outside of the Jumbotron, but you can add them inside the Jumbotron. And next you're going to use the grid system to add in thumbnail pictures of coffee. And I've listed the source of the actual coffee pictures, and there's also image links here. So image link one, if you click on it, it takes you directly to this image. That way you can either download them or just copy and paste this image file path. It's up to you. But again, you're gonna use image tags and then copy in these six pictures of coffee. So here we can kind of think of this as some sort of coffee lover's blog where there's different pictures of coffee. But what's important here is that you're actually going to be discovering a new class of Bootstrap on your own. So this is an actual practice of referencing the documentation for something you haven't done before. And in this case, you're gonna be looking up the thumbnail class for Bootstrap, which is gonna help you a lot actually organize these images and give them this nice little border. Okay. Then after that, you're gonna make sure that the largest settings have three columns of pictures. So here I can see I'm taking up three columns in total. That's four, four, and four, if we think back to the grid system. And then this next row also has three total columns, that means three pictures, four, four, and four out of those 12 columns. And the other requirement is that on the smallest screen setting, you should still have two columns. And it's up to you where you wanna make the change as far as where the actual breakpoint happens. But what I really am concerned about is if we minimize this, so if I shrink this down to the smallest possible size, scroll all the way down here, I still have two columns each. So it's gonna be six and six, six and six, six and six. So keep that in mind, it's one of the requirements that on the largest setting it's three, on the smallest setting it's two. And it's up to you where you wanna actually make the break point. You can have it break at medium, break at small, etc. But at extra small, it should have those two. And on the largest, it should have these three. Okay, then you're gonna create another HTML file for the signup page, and it's gonna be a form with an email, password, and a checkbox. We've actually already seen it, but if you click right here on the sign-in page, we see a little jumbotron here, and it has this email, the password, and the keep me locked in, and submit. All right, so that's it, and I want you to feel free to really play around with this project, style it more to your liking, but the main focuses of this project are adding in a nav bar, adding in the jumbotron, adding in the form on the sign-in page, the container and the grid system. So notice everything here is in a container, that way it's in the middle of the page, and the grid system, along with a thumbnail class so you're gonna be discovering on your own here, actually has the pictures of coffee looking nice and organized. Okay, again, totally up to you if you want to attempt these instructions on your own before looking at the solutions lecture, or if you like a more laid back tutorial style, then just skip doing it on your own and follow along with the solutions lecture that's coming up next. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to post them to the Q&A forums, and I'm happy to help you out. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. In this lecture, we'll be coding through the solutions for the Coffee Lover Bootstrap project that I explained in the previous lecture. Let's jump to our editor and browser and get started. Okay, so here I have my browser open. Just as a quick reminder, what we're going to do is create this Jumbotron add some content to the Jumbotron, have these two paragraphs here, these lorem ipsums, add the pictures of the coffee, use the thumbnail class, and then make sure that we have the nav bar, and then if I click on the sign in, it takes me to the form. We also wanna make sure that we get the grid system right when we're actually adding these thumbnails of the coffee pictures. And we have the links to these coffee pictures right here on these links right here. So one, two, three, takes you to images of coffee. Okay, let's get started. All right, so I have my editor here open with my browser behind it. I've opened up a new project.html file, so I'm going to just link to it now. So I've copied its full path, and I'm going to paste it here into my browser. So right now it's blank. Let's add in some HTML code. Let's call the title of it project, and let's also add the link we're going to need for Bootstrap itself. So I'm just going to copy and paste that from the website. I already have it open on another window on another screen, so I save that, and then let's add in just the heading here to make sure everything's working. We'll say connected, refresh over here, and I can see I'm connected. Great. So the first thing I wanna take care of is probably the nav bar, since we know it's going to be just here on the top of the page. All we have to do for that is add in nav. And remember, we have a class here, and it's going to be nav bar, and I'm going to also add in navbar dot or dash inverse, which is going to allow us to have that darker color here. Refresh that, and I can see I have my navbar inverse. Doesn't have anything inside of it yet, so let's add in those things. 
In our case, it's just one other item. So what we'll end up doing is putting an unordered list in there and we can give it the class navbar dash nav and before that it's actually nav space navbar dash nav and then the list item I want here is an anchor tag with an h reference of my signup page and I've called my signup page that I'm working with right now new underscore signup dot html and this is going to say sign in let's save that refresh and I can see here I have sign in but notice here I also have this welcome so let's add that in as well and that's going to be a brand so let's put that in which means it's going to be underneath the nav tag I'll create a div and this one takes navbar dash header and again I don't expect you to memorize these just be able to reference the documentation for what you need and then we'll put an anchor tag here the class it's going to have is the navbar dash brand and the href we want it to have is just the hashtag and we'll say something like welcome let's refresh make sure it got in there and there's our welcome and there's our sign in if I click sign in it takes me to the new sign up all right looks like our nav bar is working as we want it to work if we come back here to the bootstrap project it's a little bigger here than what we have here but that's actually because I'm zoomed in on this page so if I zoom in on this page we'll get the same size so you can see here I have the little plus thing if I just actually reset the default I'll get the same size that I have on this screen okay so our nav bar is taken care of if I click sign in it takes me to that new sign up page let's actually just copy and paste this code that we have so far and put it on the new sign up page in fact I'm gonna copy this entire page put it on my new sign up HTML page and then instead of taking it to sign in I'm going to change this to landing page and then have it take me to the original HTML which is new underscore project we'll save that refresh over here and now I have this link to the landing page on my sign up page and then I click sign in takes me to the landing page and you can see how it's uh, changing it back and forth okay great so let's come back to our main new project.html page check out the bootstrap project we still need to add in this jumbotron so let's go ahead and do that first thing I want to do is put it all in a container so I have that div with the container class and then what I'll end up doing is putting in the jumbotron here so I'll say div put in the jumbotron and then we'll say h1 coffee lover project and then let's just add in some paragraphs of lorem ipsum here just so we have a little bit of content on the page we'll save that refresh our project and we can see here we have coffee lover project lorem ipsum lorem ipsum so if we come back to bootstrap project we've created a general landing page for jumbotron we created a nav bar on the page that links with the other HTML. We added two paragraphs on lower ipsum to the jumbotron. And next we need to use the grid system to add in the thumbnail pictures of coffee. And we have all those links right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So coming back down, I'm going to need to add in those pictures. So how do I actually do that? Well, since I want to take advantage of the grid system for the resizing of that, I want to make sure that it's in a container and then in a row. So I'll create a new div have it be container I could have also just put it in here in this container but sometimes it's nice to separate out your code this way we'll put heading 2 and have it say pictures of coffee and then I'll manually code out the first actual row and then we'll just copy and paste for the rest of them so the next div I want is the row class and then here I'll make another div and let's put this all in one line and remember I want it to be at least three columns of pictures across on the largest setting so if I expand this I see three pictures across in the largest setting and on the smallest setting it should just be two pictures so you can see the pictures actually get smaller to adjust for that as I go on 
So expanding this again, three, and at the smallest, it's going to be two. So no matter how small it gets, it's always two pictures across. No matter how big it gets, it's always three pictures across, which means I want something like this. I want call on large. I want each picture to take up four units out of those 12 units because four times three is 12. And then at the very smallest, call extra small, I want it to take six units. So six times two is 12. And then the next thing I want to do is add in the thumbnail class. And the thumbnail class allows us to actually make these pictures into thumbnails. And let's explore what that looks like in the documentation. Coming to getbootstrap.com, I can click on the components. And over here on the right hand side, I'll see and look down that there's thumbnails. So clicking on that, I see I can extend Bootstrap's grid system with the thumbnail component to easily display grids of images, videos, text, and more. And this is kind of going to look like almost like Pinterest style photos. And they show you an example here of what these actually look like. But the main thing to notice is that all we have to do is say class thumbnail. And what thumbnail allows you to do is actually expand the call to the class on the outside. So by default, Bootstrap's thumbnails are designed to showcase linked images with some minimal required markup. And then you can also put in custom content, which we won't be doing here, but you can see that I could even add in this little heading, some paragraph statements, and then some buttons as well. So those are two examples of uh, what thumbnails look like. Basically, all you had to do was add in the thumbnail class. So coming back to our project, we're going to add in here a thumbnail, and then we're going to add an image tag right here. And we want to make sure that our source matches up to the coffee picture. And all those coffee picture sources are available to you here on the Bootstrap. So you can click on one of them and it'll take you to this link right here. So I can just copy and paste this link and then put it as the source of my image, save this. And then if I refresh my project, I can begin to see the first picture of my coffee. So now instead of just repeating those steps over and over again, I'm going to copy and paste all of these from the solutions because it's basically just duplicate over and over again. So I copy and paste these. Let's shift tab over and I can see here I have everything the same. It's just linking to different images that I had on the solutions. So let's save that refresh over here. And now I can see I have my pictures of coffee three across three across. Everything's looking good. Okay. Now that's actually all I really needed for the project itself as far as the main signup page. The only thing I have to check now is if I begin to decrease this, it turns into two columns, which we see it eventually does. Great, even as it gets smaller, it always stays two. Now I just need to fix the signup page, which is currently blank right now. So let's do that. Let me click open my new signup page, which is right here, new underscore signup HTML. It only has the nav bar right now, so we need to add in the forms. If we take a look at what the solutions looked like, so coming back here, clicking on sign in, I can see there's actually a large jumbotron saying to log in, enter your email and password. So let's add that into our sign up page. It's going to come outside of this nav. I'm going to say, whoops, div, put in a container, another div with the jumbotron itself. And then I'm going to just put in heading one, log in, and then the paragraph is going to say enter your email and password. So let's save that, make sure it actually registered with our site. Refresh. Great. So there's the login, enter your email and password. Now it's time to just add in the form. So I'll say form. And there's an action here, index.html. We really don't need to worry about any action because we're not actually going to lead anywhere and we don't need to worry about the method. If we wanted this to lead somewhere else to another page on the back end, we could have filled that in, but we don't need to worry about that. The class, however, we do need to worry about. So we'll say form dash group. Remember, that's the class we've been working with for bootstrap forms. And then I want to add in a label and an input. First one is going to be my email input. And we're going to give this class form dash control. 
remember the two main classes we were working with when we were working with inputs and forms, it was form group and form control. And then the label I want for this is email. And I want to make sure this has a name, so we'll give it a name user em for user email and make sure we assign it this label user em. Now we don't need to actually give it a value. Instead, let's give it a placeholder and we'll say email just so it looks a little nicer. Let's save that, make sure it worked. We'll refresh. Great, here's our email, but notice it's going all the way across, so it's actually not in a container class, which means I need to come back here and either put it back into this original container or create a new container. It's up to you, depending on how you want to organize your code, but I'll just put it in a new container. So let's grab this form, put it in that new container, refresh, and here we have it in a nice container. Okay, so we have our email looking nice with the container. Let's come back up here and actually add in to our form the password, the checkbox, and the submit button. So this will look really similar for the password, so I can actually just copy this, paste it in here, and change the things I need to change. So for instance, I want to change the actual label to say password, and I'll also change for, instead of user em, I'll say user pass, which means I need to change this name over here to user pass. I also need to change the type to password. I'll keep class form control the same. And then placeholder, we're going to say password here. Let's save this, refresh, make sure it all worked. And there's our email, there's our password, looking good. Now let's add in that checkbox. Remember that checkbox just said something like, uh, keep me logged in. So I'll create a div and we'll give it the class checkbox. We'll call a label. We'll say it's for user check. We'll say keep me logged in. Doesn't matter if we capitalize everything. And then I want the input to be a checkbox input with the name user check. Let's save that and see what we get when I refresh this. So it says keep me logged in, but note that it's actually on top of my checkbox. So let's fix that. The way I fix that is by actually putting in my label wrapped around the input. So I'm going to grab this input over here and make sure I call it in the correct form. So I'm going to pass it in before the keep me logged in. So now let's save this, refresh. And I can see here, now I have my checkbox before the actual label keep me logged in. So again, the way I did that, if I expand this window, scroll to the left here, is I called the label, said input type, and then had the text keep me logged in and closed off that label. Then I just want to add in the submit button. So I will call button type is going to be submit. We could have also said input, it's up to you. And let's give it the class btn, btn default. And that's just something you can reference off the documentation, depending on what you want it to actually look like. You could have styled it as a success button or a primary, it's really up to you. If we refresh this, we can see now we have this button here, However, it doesn't actually have anything in it. So let's add in something like submit, save it, refresh, and here we see submit. And now our website's looking pretty good. So if we come back to the landing page, we see Coffee Lover Project, the pictures of the coffee, coming to the sign in, we see our login. I can put in an email and I can put in a password, select to keep me logged in and submit. All right, that's really all you had to do for this project. Um, I know it can seem really intimidating at first when you see this version of the project, the actual official one. So everything with the instructions, but hopefully you saw from what we learned here in the solutions video that it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, we didn't even reference the documentation that much for what we had to do. A lot of it was just covered in the videos. Now, I know some things such as remembering what these classes are, such as form group or form control, 
uh, may seem tedious at this point in time, but these are things you're going to be using often enough when you're working with Bootstrap that you'll actually remember them. Um, and I know I keep saying that you'll reference the documentation a lot, but even for simple things like this, which is actually a pretty good looking landing page, um, you don't have to reference documentation that much with the amount of practice you're going to be getting with Bootstrap in this course. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the project. I will see you at the next lecture.